This is our 2023 roundup of the best video editing software for Mac right now. After a lot of research and testing, I'm gonna share my top recommendations, whether you're looking for free beginner-friendly options up to advanced pro-level video editors on Mac, I've got you covered. Now this is likely gonna be a shorter and a very different video to when we've created these in previous years. And it's so cool to see how much the video editing landscape has actually changed in this time. So my recommendations right now are actually the simplest that they have ever been. For most people, I actually don't recommend a lot of the options that I used to. So my picks now for the top two video editing software on Mac go to CapCut and DaVinci Resolve. And you can actually get both of them for free. So I'm gonna give you the rundown on both of them, but also cover off why these two and why they're so powerful. But I'm also going to look at why I'm not recommending the other options over these two anymore. So CapCut is a really easy to use yet really powerful video editing application that works on Mac, it works on Windows, and there's also an Android and an iPhone version of this too, because it actually started out as an app first. And I think that's actually part of the reason that it helps make CapCut so powerful on desktop is that it's really taken the overall approach from the smaller screen, the mobile versions first, which means it's incredibly intuitive and really easy to use. So someone who is an absolute beginner can jump in here, start playing around, figure it out, and be able to create something pretty amazing without much time and effort. There's also so many different transitions and effects in here, but not just the average stuff that you find in something like iMovie, like a basic wipe, a basic star wipe. There's actually some really cool and really usable ones in here that will help you level up your video creation and your storytelling. And there's also a lot of AI tools and effects in here as well. Things like an amazing background remover that works incredibly well. So you could remove the background without needing to go ahead and use a green screen. For color correction, there's a lot of presets and filters and things that you can apply, but you can also customize them up to really help you dial in the look and feel that you're after. Now these are definitely not pro grade tools. So if you're after those, the next option is gonna be the one for you, but there's more than enough in here to again, help you create something amazing with minimal effort. Now, another thing I absolutely love that they've got in here now is adjustment layers. So you can essentially add this blank layer on top of your videos and you can apply things to it, add adjustments. And those adjustments will flow through to just the clips that are underneath that adjustment layer. This makes it really powerful and really fast to be able to say, apply an effect or a color grade to a bunch of clips really, really quickly. And this is something that you would normally only find in much more professional video editing tools and applications. There's also things like built-in video stabilization, like motion tracking, and even noise reduction to help you clean up the audio in your videos. And again, it's all really intuitive, it's easy to find, it's easy to add into your workflow. I mean, there's even this feature in here where you can type out text and it will read it back to you in different natural sounding voices, or it will even sing it back to you. Prime now in terms of the downsides or the things you need to be aware of, I personally would steer clear of the music selection in here. A lot of video editing tools and apps and things will give you music that you can use in your videos, but then a lot of them you could end up with copyright strikes, copyright claims on YouTube if you're going to use that music. So as a general rule, I'd much prefer to see you actually own the license to the music and that's why we use Epidemic Sound and why we use Artlist as our top two places to get music for our videos because we know that the license piece is totally handled and we're not gonna have any problems in the future. But in the case of CapCut here, it's actually got a lot of copyright music in here, meaning that you're gonna get flagged on YouTube really, really quickly if you are using that stuff. But they've got it in here because CapCut is actually made by the same company, ByteDance, who also make TikTok. So not only is this amazing tool to make TikTok videos, it's also an amazing video editor in general, but there are some extra features and things that if you are creating TikToks, then yeah, you could use the copyright music, make your TikTok, and you're not gonna have a problem with licensing if that's where you're gonna upload it to. Now, the other thing with CapCut being owned by the same company as TikTok is that there are concerns around the terms of service. And if there's questionable stuff in there, like there is with TikTok, is that also the case with CapCut? Now, this is definitely not my area of expertise, but apparently, CapCut and TikTok are actually banned in places like India already. But I'm not saying this to scare you, just to make you aware. I still use CapCut, I love CapCut. It is installed on all of my devices, and I think what they're giving you access to for free is absolutely incredible. So CapCut here is obviously replacing a lot of the different recommendations and things that I had previously. Things like iMovie. This beats iMovie in almost every way. It's easier to use, there's more stuff built in, and again, it's the same price, it's free. Filmora is another one that I do think now CapCut is a better solution all round for most people out there. But again, which is the best one for you is gonna come down to your 
skill set, the videos you're creating, what's gonna resonate and work the best for you. That's the important stuff. Video editing apps and software, they're, they're just a tool to edit video. So your goal is to find the one that is easiest for you to get the job done, to make videos. The one that allows you to be as creative as you can be without being held up or limited by the software. So that's where my top two recommendations here of CapCut and DaVinci Resolve. These are gonna cover off the basis of most people that are out there making videos. So CapCut, an amazing free tool, great for someone absolute beginner through to intermediate. If you are looking for the more advanced stuff or you're gonna create really complicated videos or you're someone that wants access to all pro grade features, then that's where DaVinci Resolve will be the option for you. So DaVinci Resolve is an incredible pro grade video editing tool that works on Mac, works on Windows, there's a Linux version, and there's also now an iOS or an iPad version too. And when I say this is pro-grade software, literally Hollywood movies and stuff are being edited and produced on this. Now, just like CapCut, there is a version of DaVinci Resolve that is 100% free. All you need to do is create a free account and you can download it, you can use it. And for most people, there's very minimal limitations. Now, one of the things I love about DaVinci Resolve, which makes this really, really powerful, is how they break down the program into different pages, into different sections of the editing process. So you can jump between these different pages and access different tools as you're creating your video. So you've got pages or an area for media. So all of your video editing assets and everything are in there. You've then got the cut page, which is where you can start to compile your footage, start to build out your story, edit down a bunch of footage really, really quickly. Then for further refinement and actual video editing, you jump across to the edit tab. And this is really where I end up spending most of my time. But then beyond that, and this is where DaVinci Resolve gets really, really powerful, is that you've got your fusion tab, which is essentially your motion graphics, your animation. Think of this like Adobe After Effects built in here. That's what the fusion tab is. You've then got color, which again is an amazing tool just in its own right and stuff that people who aren't even editing in DaVinci Resolve will take their projects from other editing applications here into DaVinci Resolve resolve into this color tab area to color grade, to process, to bring the look and feel of their video, their movie, their documentary to life. This color area is absolutely amazing and it's actually where DaVinci Resolve started, was just this color stuff. Next one across is Fairlight, which is all things audio. Again, another pro grade tool that really does stand on its own two feet and is used by audio professionals, even if they're not doing the video stuff. And then the last one, Deliver, this is where you can export and save out all of your stuff. So I know it sounds like a lot and it might be overwhelming, but you don't need to know it all. You don't need to be using it all. For me, primarily, I'm just hanging out in the edit page and, and that's enough for me. That does everything I need and so much more. And this is where over the past few years, DaVinci Resolve has actually become now really, really popular because of these amazing features and tool sets that cover a wide range of use cases and professions. And it's so easily accessible for anyone to jump in, start learning this stuff and move right through to be a professional. They've added some really cool new features recently and some AI stuff too. Things like voice isolation, which is incredibly powerful at removing background noise, really cleaning up your audio, whether it was recorded in an echo environment, it's gonna process all of that and make it sound amazing. There's also some really powerful tracking and masking features in here now too, which when you first see them in action, especially if you've been doing this stuff manually before, it'll just blow your mind how good this stuff is. But in terms of overall editing, it is intuitive. It is easy enough to use. No, it's not at the same level as CapCut, but if you're comparing this to something like Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, you'll feel just at home jumping into here because it's gonna feel familiar to you. It's almost like they've looked at Avid, they've looked at Premiere, they've looked at Final Cut, they've taken bits and pieces from each and really just melded them into something pretty amazing here. They've also improved dramatically the way you work with teams or work collaboratively on your editing projects, either through their own cloud service or even just transferring projects. It's all much, much simpler now. And I'd actually now use this over Adobe Premiere if I am working with teams. Now it's definitely worth noting here that you will need to have a fairly recent computer, a fairly powerful computer to be able to use this well. So if you're gonna try and use this on an older, low powered computer, it's probably not gonna work and it's probably not gonna be a great experience for you. So definitely check out their system requirements and I'll have those linked in the description box below. Now in terms of pricing, as I said, there is a free version which is incredibly powerful, which is gonna probably suit most people that are watching this. But there is also a paid studio version for $295. 
and that unlocks some more advanced features, but also more power, more integration with your video cards, with your computer hardware to help you process and render and edit in a more fluid way. So for years now, Final Cut has been our top pick when it comes to best video editing software on Mac. We're kind of ingrained in Final Cut a little bit with templates, with workflows, with shortcuts. So for right now, for the business, it makes sense for us to continue with that. But yeah, if we were starting again, hands down, DaVinci Resolve. So this isn't to say now that Final Cut or Adobe Premiere are bad. It's just if you're looking at the overall package, what you're getting access to, that entire suite of software and how well it works together without jumping into separate apps or separate tools, but also just for video editing alone and knowing that the free version is gonna be more than enough for most people. And for those that do wanna pay and upgrade and get more performance out of it, that it's a one-time fee and not an ongoing subscription, it makes it a pretty compelling offer. But of course, it makes sense if you already have an Adobe subscription, if you're already paying for Photoshop or you're already using After Effects in your workflow, then it would likely make sense for you to use Premiere because again, they are so similar. Okay, so rounding this out, if you are a beginner to intermediate, CapCut is gonna be the tool for you. If you're someone who just wants to do fast, simple edits with a bunch of effects and controls and stuff in there, then look at CapCut. On the other hand, if you're someone who wants pro-grade tools, literally industry standard software, or you're someone who wants to have access to some of those features without needing to be become a full professional, just to know that you've got that creative control and the features and stuff there, but also have access to a next level professional video editing tool, then DaVinci Resolve is going to be your pick. Now, irrespective of which program you end up with, the fastest way and the most effective way to edit your videos down is if you're following a clear process. Check out the video linked on screen where I take you through our editing process, which is gonna make everything super simple for you. And also check out in the description box, I've got links to DaVinci Resolve and CapCut video editing tutorials to help you get up to speed fast. See you in there.